in this video I'm going to explain a few useful methods of the string class. Now as you know, a string is a reference data type that can be used to store one or more characters, and reference data types have access to some fairly useful methods. Let's begin by creating a string variable called name. String name equals, and let's assign this a value of whatever your name is. So let's type our name variable, dot, and here are all the methods that we have access to. I'll describe and explain a few of the more useful methods that you might be interested in at this level. So let's begin with the equals method. This will compare two strings to see if they are equal. So within the equals method, let's type another string. I'm just going to copy what I have for my name to make this easy. This will return a Boolean value, and we can do something with that Boolean value, such as use it for an if statement or anything else. So I'm going to store the result within a Boolean value. Let's call this result. Boolean result equals name dot equals, and then type in a string. And let's display what the result is. So our equals method is going to compare my two strings, my name variable and whatever string is within here. And this will return true. However, it is case sensitive though. If I made the B in my name lowercase, this will now return false. But I could instead use the equals ignore case method. And now both of these strings, according to my equals ignore case method, is now true. Next on my list is the length method. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to turn this line into a comment and I am going to create a new variable. So the length method is going to return an integer based on the length of a string. Int result equals name dot length. And this will return a value of three because we have three letters in my name, but your name might be different. We also have the char at method. This will return a single character char result equals name dot char at. And we list an index if we would like to access the first character in our string, that would be index zero. And the second position would be one. The third position would be two. Then you just continue on in that pattern. So the character at index zero of my name is capital B. Then we have index of. This will return an integer. Int result equals name dot index of. This will find a character and return the index of where the method finds that character. So let's say I would like to find an index of capital B. So this will return the position. And we have a capital B at index zero. If this was O, lowercase O, that is at index two. We can also check to see if a string is empty. This will return a Boolean value. Boolean result equals name dot is empty. So currently my name is not empty and this will return false. Now, if I got rid of my name and we just have an empty set of quotes here, this will return true because my name variable is now empty. So let me reverse that and move on to the next method. We also have the to uppercase method. We can change all of the letters in a string all to uppercase. So this will return a string string result equals name dot to uppercase. Now my name is all uppercase and there is also two lowercase. Actually, I'm just going to copy most of this, paste it and change upper to lower. This will change all of the characters in my name, all to lowercase. And now the B in my name is now lowercase. We can also trim some empty space before and after the string. String result equals name dot trim. So this will remove all of this empty space that I just added. The trim method will remove all of this empty space before and after my characters that I have. And the last method I have to show you guys is the replace method. This will return a string and we can replace 
a character with another within a string name dot replace and there are two values we need to place within the replace method an old character and a new character that we want to replace the old character with let's say we would like to replace all o's with a's so this will replace the o in my name with a and now my name is bra well guys and gals that is a few of the more useful string methods but not all of the methods entirely available to you if you type in a string variable type dot at least with the clips this will prompt an entire list and you can always read through some of the descriptions to see what some of these methods will do so those are a few of the more useful string methods in this video i'm going to explain wrapper classes a wrapper class provides a way to use primitive data types as reference data types here are a few examples of primitive data types they include but are not limited to booleans chars ints doubles there's still many more out there such as bytes shorts and floats but here are a few of the more common ones that we've been working with so notice that strings are not within this list of primitive data types that's because strings are already reference data types. Now, reference data types have some advantages and disadvantages. A few advantages, for one, would include that they may contain some useful methods. For example, take the last video on string methods. The string class contains some useful methods, and strings are an example of a reference data type. Also, reference data types can be used with certain collections and they can be used with, for example, array lists, which we'll learn about in the next video. And a disadvantage of reference data types over primitive data types, for one, is that reference data types are slower to access. If you need to get the value of a primitive data type that is enclosed within a wrapper class, it's going to take more steps. So if you're working with millions of numbers, well, it's going to take a lot more time and a lot more processing power to use reference data types compared to primitive data types because primitive data types are a lot faster. So each primitive data type has a corresponding wrapper class, and there's a naming convention with these. For the wrapper class, the first letter is capital, and the entire name is, for the most part, spelt out. So Boolean would be Boolean with a capital B, char would be character with a capital C, int is integer with a capital I, and double is still double, but with a capital D. So let's assign a few primitive data types and use the corresponding wrapper class to create a reference data type. So Java has this feature called auto boxing and unboxing. We can directly assign some primitive values to a wrapper class automatically. And here's the definition. So auto boxing is the automatic conversion that the Java compiler makes between primitive data types and their corresponding object wrapper class. So let's use auto boxing to assign a primitive data type, a few primitive data types to each corresponding wrapper class. So let's begin with a Boolean value. So we're going to list the data type and it's going to be the wrapper class. So Boolean with a capital B, let's call this variable A equals, and then we can just use auto boxing to directly assign a primitive value to this reference data type. So I'm going to say that Boolean A equals true. And that is it. And let's assign a few others. So we have character, character B equals, let's assign a character, maybe the at symbol, integer C equals one, two, three. And double D equals, let's say 3.14. And what we have done is created four reference data type variables, Boolean A, character B, integer C, and double D. And for fun, let's create a string variable as well. Let's say string E equals whatever your name is. So are you beginning to see a pattern here? Strings are already a reference data type. That's why the first letter in the string data type when you declare a variable of this type is capital compared to the primitive data type variables that we've been working with. So it's kind of like we've been using reference data types all along when working with strings. As we've discussed at the beginning of this video, reference data types have a few advantages and disadvantages, and one of the advantages is that each wrapper class may contain some useful methods, kind of like what we did with the string class in the last video. So we already have a string. Let's look at a few of the methods of 
Boolean wrapper classes. So type in the name of the Boolean variable a dot, and then here are all the methods that you have access to. The same thing goes with characters. Here's a bunch of methods you can use. Same thing with integers and doubles. So reference data types within the wrapper class, they have access to some useful methods that you can use for your program. Not only that, but you can use these reference data types with certain collections, and we'll be using them for array lists in the next video. So if you need to access the values within a wrapper class, well, there's a feature called autoboxing and unboxing. Autoboxing is the automatic conversion that the Java compiler makes between primitive data types and their corresponding object wrapper class. When we directly assigned some values to each of these reference data types, what we have done is autoboxing. We automatically converted these primitive values to the corresponding wrapper class automatically. But unboxing is the reverse. We can convert a wrapper class to its primitive value. So what I'm saying is that with unboxing, we can treat these reference data type variables as if they were standard primitive values. So for example, let's say if boolean a is equal to true, then we will display this is true. So even though this is a reference data type, it will still behave as a standard primitive data type because of the unboxing feature. And the same thing goes with B, except uh, B has to be a character. So let's check to see if this is equal to our at sign. And this is also true. So that is the unboxing feature. You can still treat these reference data types as if they were primitives. So even though there are a few advantages of wrapper classes over the primitive data type that they may contain, there is still the disadvantage that accessing the values contained within a wrapper class still takes a lot more steps compared to using just a raw primitive value. So if you're working on a program that contains millions of numbers, for example, using reference data types, using the wrapper class for each primitive value is going to take a lot more steps compared to just using a standard primitive value. So primitive values are a lot faster than reference data types. So everybody, that's the basics of wrapper classes. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like it, then press the like button. Share it with your friends or anyone who wants to make his career in Java. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comment section is all yours. This is the eighth part of this series. For more parts from this series, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.